Now we present the session, Reinvent the Digital Future, Our Consumers' Life Cycle with Google. Here to lead the discussion, please welcome Carlos Granda, VP Global Customer Success and Cloud Customer Experience LATAM for Google Cloud, along with Juliana Rios, CIO of LATAM Airlines, and Fernando Matskin, Chief Business Officer for North America for Globant. Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to this today's session. Today, we're going to talk about reinventing the digital future of our customer's life cycle with Google. My name is Carlos Granda, I'm Vice President of Global Customer Success, and I also lead our Latin America customer experience. And so I'm delighted to be here with Fernando and with Juliana to share with you some thoughts. The last 18 months have been some unprecedented times. I don't think there's a playbook or a cookbook that tells you how to deal with what we have dealt in the last 18 months. Um, these times have disrupted not just our business, but also our personal lives. And whether you're responsible for technology, whether you're responsible for business, it doesn't matter. You've had to adjust to figure out how do you connect, how do you network, how do you service, and how do you give everything you can to your customers? And so with that, I wanted to just have this discussion with the two of them and have us share our thoughts about what's going on in their world. So with that, I'm gonna open it up and do a little bit of introduction. So Juliana, let's start with you. Hello, Carlos. Hello, Fernando. Very nice to be here. Thank you for the invitation. I am the CIO of Latin Airlines. I'm Brazilian, based in Chile since 2015. Uh, I'm in the position of CIO since the end of last year, more or less one year. As any other airline in the planet, the pandemic has reached us really hard. It has been extremely challenging since the beginning, but we also knew that was an opportunity in there. It had to be, right? So we, we took the opportunity of the pandemic and we are gonna talk about that today to also rethink who we are, what we do and how we do business. And that, is, that, was an, that, that opportunity was unique and we had to take advantage of it. And I'm gonna tell you more about it later. Thank you, Juliana. Fernando? Excellent. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Juliana. Super excited to be here. My name is Fernando Matskin. I'm the Chief Business Officer uh, for North America for Globant. I've been working uh, for the company for the last 12 years. And like Carlos said, this like 18 months, uh, you know, there's no way we could have been like prepared for this in any way, which uh, uh, there was a lot of learning uh, along the process and, you know, uh, finding new ways of doing things. But, uh, you know, it was a, you know, at the end of the day, it was a, a great year of, of discovery, of growth, of connecting with our clients and with our lovers in new uh, ways, in different ways. And, you know, I guess one of the things that took most of our energy during these last 18 months was really how to, how to keep, how to keep close to our, to our lovers, as we call our team members globally, how to uh, be close to them, how to support our lovers and their families. Uh, throughout all the things that we had to go through, and um, and we did it successfully. So you know, today with Juliana, with Carlos, we're going to talk about uh, what was the impact of this, you know, radical transformation, radical acceleration, in in our company, in Latin Airlines, and in our clients as well. Well, thank you, Fernando. So let me actually start with a few questions, and we can turn into a hopefully a, a great dialogue. Like one of the one of the silver linings, I guess, when you think about uh, if there's anything positive that come out out of COVID in the last 18 months is that we now know that with technology, anything is possible. But at the same time, we all have to rethink around our different business models, bringing up new ways of helping our customers and our partners to leverage te te technology to be successful for their own customers. And so I love the conversation that I've had with Juliana as it relates to how she sees her business, her world, and actually how close she's working together with her business partners to make this thing happen. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Juliana first. So Juliana, give me your thoughts and comments around what have you been the silver lining um, for your business in this after this pandemic? So let me start by saying that during the pandemic, we, we had almost 90% of our uh, airplane fleets was grounded. 
the, one of the biggest problems that you had to face in the beginning was where to park. The, the planet, the, the, the airports do not have enough parking space for airplanes. So we had to deal with so many things when it started. So uh, yes, customer could start flying again, and it was really different in the different regions of the planet. Uh, there was several, a lot of regulation and a lot of restrictions that were there. People were afraid of flying. They were afraid to get into the airplane. So we really had to put a lot of things in place uh, to, to make sure that the flying was safe. Right, that that you should you a customer could shouldn't worry would, was not needed to worry about their health. So when we learn how to do the protocols in parallel to all of that, we have the the problem the internal problem, right? So the people we we had to let people go. We had to review and reduce salary of a big portion of the of the employees of Latan. Uh, so there also was many a lot of very difficult decisions, difficult times, and no one had could say what was going to happen, when would that, would everything get better? Uh, so it was very difficult for us and it's still challenging, but we also saw a big opportunity to really rethink. We look at ourselves at the mirror and we like it some things that we saw and we didn't like some other things. So it was, we learned that we had a great opportunity to reposition ourselves, ourselves in, a, in the society that we operate in the communities and have a different agenda and, and be more helpful. So in the Latin American region, for example, we transport uh, vaccines uh, in, to the, all the countries. We went to China many times to get vaccines to bring to the region. And we, we did all of that without charging anyone, governments or anything. So it was a way to contribute. And uh, also we, we saw a lot of opportunities of refining better our sustainability agenda, our long-term existence. Uh, and also work better with diversity. So we, there were so many things that we, we could, as hibernation was there, we took as an opportunity to work better. And, uh, and another thing, of course, as Carlos was saying, was the digital transformation. Uh, and uh, I'm sure I'm gonna talk more about that, but it was also a great opportunity to really, really think uh, and rebuild and invest on the, on the new initiatives that would make a difference to the customers after the pandemic. Thank you, Juliana. Fernando? So, you know, the one of the things that this uh, pandemic left us was an obvious uh, acceleration, right, in, in technology adoption. Uh, uh, I think, you know, all of our clients uh, finally understood that there was no no way of doing uh, of doing business successfully without without te without technology. So as part of this acceleration, we've seen a level setting of digital initiatives across many of our clients across different industries. Uh, you know, basic initiatives like uh, improving the customer experience, uh, in, investing uh, more aggressively in digital marketing initiatives and a few other things kind of lay, you know, lay the, the necessary baseline uh, to be able to get into more radical uh, technology, uh, radical technologies like you know blockchain and, and metaverse and new ways and innovative ways of connecting with the client in in the digital and in the physical world uh, as well as a combination. So uh, you know I think that uh, if there if there were any uh, stakeholders in our clients in the past who were in charge of the digital strategy and they were not able to get enough budget or enough support, <laughs> all of a sudden they yeah. had more, more support and more budget that they could execute on and handle. Uh, so that, you know, that's, that was one of the, of the key things, but, you know, technology as a key component of any business across industries has become, uh, has become like uh, something very visible to us. Yeah. No, thank you for that, for that, Fernando. And I think uh, that we've seen the different spectrums of our customers. We've seen the sort of like Latam Airlines when they're really trying to reimagine who they want to be, how do they want to become, how do they want to grow and become this very innovative airline, not just for Latin America, but around the world. And so we see those. But we've also seen customers, uh, as you said, Fernando, who maybe didn't have the budget or struggled to get alignment from different stakeholders internally to get technology adoption or to drive in digital transformation suddenly the pandemic has, uh, you don't have a choice. 
you have to do this. And so that also has been a great momentum. And I do believe that innovation is going to come up quite a bit with our customers around the world. And I'm sure for you as well, uh, Fernando and Globant and, and all of your customers. So let's go through the next topic because we've talked about customers, but also this pandemic has impacted our own people, our own team. And you know, for me, being um, I joined Google Cloud two years ago, and about 80% of the people that I've hired in the last two years were hired, onboarded, recruited, interviewed in a pandemic. Some of them barely started to see their offices uh, and even their own managers, uh, I would say in the last three months or so. So as a customer facing, I mean, we have customer in our name, as a customer facing function has been somewhat difficult and um, the virtual interactions and, and even the engagement and myself as a leader to try to connect with them has definitely stretched around how what we do and how we do it and trying to build a culture of collaboration. So Fernando, let me start with you. In what new ways have you seen your customers driving innovation in ways that, uh, and I mean your customers, I mean your own employees, your own team, helping their, their own customers when you can't really connect or even be in their offices? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the, the usage of uh, tools like Google Workspace uh, has become more natural than ever across every single function in our company and in our clients. Whereas in the past, perhaps you've seen a stronger adoption in the engineering teams or in the design teams or product teams or or whatnot. Now you're seeing every staff area, every uh, Glover, and you know uh, every every member of uh, of the staff or our clients as well adopting naturally Google Workspace and you know every other collaboration tool out there as a you know as a as a basic as a basic tool for everyday work and uh, and innovation and and collaboration. Uh, from our perspective, you know, we've always, uh, you know, we've been like uh, also gathering data out of the usage of these tools, and that has allowed us to understand better in this virtual world how our teams connected with other teams. You know, how offices from different geographies uh, interacted in which way, and which offices perhaps were not interacting the most. Like, you know, uh, we've we've been using for many years uh, tools. Uh, that we use to strength, strengthen our, our, our culture, uh, and, and you know that gave us a lot of information and connected uh, connected that with Google Workspace and collaboration tools. It allowed us to understand much better how that innovation and that collaboration flew uh, across different geographies and different business functions. Um, so you know, you know, we've been able to to uh, continue our mission of disrupting our business and disrupting our our clients and pushing our clients to think in new ways of doing business and become more digitally efficient. And I guess because of the urgency and the acceleration that we've seen, you know, uh, this drove all of our clients to adopt these new digital tools in a very natural way and continue moving forward with, uh, with their mission without major issues. Thank you, Fernando. And thank you, by the way, for the big plug in for our workspace product. Uh, we did not put that on the script for you. But so thank you for doing that and saying that. Uh, but now let me turn it over to Juliana. So for you, Juliana, what are you doing? What What is you and your leadership team doing to create a collaborative culture within your team where sometimes they're not they're not there physically making the connection, but trying to use technical or, or tools to to keep that uh, collaboration going? So we actually have, if you stop to think about the, the our airline or any, or any other airline, I imagine, we are actually had all the time the two realities. There are people that have to go somewhere, right? So they have to go to the airport. They have to be there to receive the customer. We never really stopped flying. So they had to be there. Even the, the captains from the airplane, the, the crew from the airplane, they had to be there physically. And also we had the rest of the company that were immediately, as soon as the pandemic started, we were sent back home to work from home. Luckily, we also were already using a lot of the Google uh, workspace, a lot of the tools. So we had Google Meet and then everybody knew how to use. So it was easy to, to work together in a way, but we did not know more like the soft uh, maybe skills to, to really be able to, to build culture, right? How can we really be together and support each other through screens? And that was something that was very hard in the beginning. But uh, to be honest, I think we are as human beings, we are so resilient that we learn how to do that. And I heard you saying that you had people that joined your company, your team during the pandemic. But I bet, then I saw that as well in my team, and it was that was 
not as a big of a problem as we would have managed, imagined before the pandemic, right? So we were ready, we, we, somehow we managed to do that because everybody was in the same situation. But, that, but there are things that I would say, that if I can say some things that can really help and, and have been helping us uh, in, in, during this, this new way of working, right? This new normal. So one of the things that I would say that for me was very important since the beginning is empathy. So yeah. the pandemic doesn't mean the same thing for everyone. It means yeah. different things. Yeah. For like for young mothers, for example, for example, I could immediately see that they, they would get a level of stress of being working yeah. from home with the kids and with the family. Not everybody had the best infrastructure. So I would say an empathy for me was the first thing that I that I really tried to exercise in every engagement that I had, it's trying to understand what is the situation and also having in mind that it doesn't mean the same thing to everyone. Yeah. So another thing, uh, it is also to, to learn and use new ways of doing. So it is very easy to do uh, the, 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 the home office and connect through video when we are all at the same. But now we are starting going back. So how does it work? What is the hybrid? And people started getting anxious about the hybrid way of working. The way that we are dealing with that here, at least in our, in our case, in my team, it is that we have a concept of remote first. So every time, everything that you do in the day to day should be remote. So staff meetings, one on one, unless you are both and all there at a certain place, you can go to the office. But if it's a meeting that not everyone is there, let's do that remote just to make sure that everybody has the same opportunity to participate. It's very hard to be a video trying to connect with a meeting with people that are sitting together in a, in a conference room. So there are things like that, that we are trying to understand and to really make the lives of everybody, everybody easier, right? With the tools that we have, but also considering the different conditions that are gonna face in the different countries. Yeah, no, thank you for that. And I think, uh, I think you, the word empathy, I think it's something that we all as leaders always try to do and we've always done it, but I think through the pandemic it becomes even more important uh, because I think one of the things that I learned, I think as we went through this is that I think maybe things that were good for some folks may not be good for everybody else. Uh, I'll give you one example is where we were trying to do, let's say, a happy hour to make a connection, a virtual happy hour with people. And at the beginning, it was fun. It was cute. It was great. We got together with people. But then eventually, you realize that people were on screen for nine, 10 hours a day. So suddenly, adding another virtual session was like actually causing a negative effect rather than the positive effect. So learning to listen and adapt to what our team wanted was actually very critical, very important that we learned very early. So with that, what is sort of the, what is the innovation? What was the most innovative thing that you saw that you did uh, that as conducting business virtually that you adapted or, or something that worked for you that suddenly the, the you know, the, the employees sort of really re reacted positively to that. So, and actually that's a question for either one of you. So Juliana or Fernando, whoever wants to go first, I'm open to it. I'll, I'll go first, Juliana, if you're uh, okay with well, that. And, and, you know, I'm going to go back again to what Juliana uh, said, which I think is super important, again, around empathy, right? And around connecting with our with our people through these very difficult times. And, and you know, that's, I think, if one of the uh, several innovations that we had to push forward with this pandemic, it was about new ways to uh, to be closer with, with our people in the virtual world. Um, you know, we've... Uh, We've implemented some functionalities uh, based on all the data that we were gathering from the interactions with our different teams uh, after the usage of our uh, tools of peer-to-peer -peer recognition tools called Star Me Up and a few others. We start we started mining a lot of information about, you know, who were the people that were, uh, you know, engaged. Who were the people that were like uh, in a, in a more uh, mentally strong position than others. And so we started like by the usage of AI, we started to, uh, for instance, find what something that we call coffee time. So when we identify any of our globers who started to be disengaged or, 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 or perhaps not participating on meetings or not participating on, on, a, on our different set of tools that we use to remain connected, uh, uh, his or her manager received an icon that we call coffee time that that meant that that global requires special attention and require individualized uh, attention to see really what was going on behind it. And sometimes if we find that was like, there was like uh, family support needed or mental health support needed 
or you know even access to vaccines whenever we could we could help on doing that like like we did in the case of our offices in india so you know everything because we are in a in a people business and we are in a talent business right so um everything related to connect it more and better with our globers that's where we pushed the innovations forward more aggressively for us and and, and for our clients whenever we we had a chance thank you fernanda juliana anything you want to add no, I, I, I think I, I just liked so much what I heard about Fernando, and I, I would I would mention the having the the condition to understand what works better for the team. And well, I think we we have a lot of uh, different ways that we put together for people to work with. We came up with we tried the happy hours as you mentioned as well, but didn't work very well. But we put together a tools to we changed the tools that you used to use to to have more frequent uh, temperature or how people are doing, for example. Uh, and this was an input, something that we would get as an input. In the past, we used to do that twice a year. Now we do that every month. We try to understand if things are healthy and the, the work environment is healthy, and then we act upon that. So with the results that we get, and we have been able to improve that significantly month by month. Uh, so it is, it's, it, I think it's about everything that we said here, right? So at, at the end of the day, it also, the techniques may vary per group, per company. It depends a lot on the culture and the type of relationship that we want to have. But uh, it was very hard for the people in general. And, and uh, in our industry in particular, it was extremely hard. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we had to let go a lot of people, as I mentioned before. And it was difficult for people that left. It was difficult for people that sure. stayed. So anyway. Yeah. It's it it's um it was it was definitely difficult and I think uh, you know going back to the empathy piece of it I think it's listening and adapting to the needs of the team and what they wanted and what made sense I think was very critical. Before I go to the next question, I did want to remind the audience that please uh, we are going to take some questions at the end. So um, it's a privilege to have Juliana and Fernando here to be able to answer any questions that you have. So please take the time to ensure that if you have some questions, we'll be answering them or we'll be taking them um, at the end a little bit. So let me go on to the, the third question of this that we've kind of put together for all of you. So like through this incredibly difficult and mournful times, I think technology adoption is sometimes becoming a send point. We mentioned it in our opening remarks, how you sell some companies and, uh, and different companies out there for us was universities, schools. Um, I found myself uh, going to, my son is in high school, and so I found myself actually going and meeting with a principal and telling them and teaching them how to use Google Classroom. And, you know, at the beginning, they didn't want any help. And suddenly uh, the high schools around were, uh, were dying. And suddenly I became the IT help desk for our local high school uh, in my neighborhood. Um, and so it was really interesting to watch. So question for you, Juliana, what departments, what groups within your organization uh, were maybe a little bit resistant to embracing technology, embracing digital transformation that suddenly through the pandemic were maybe more uh, open? more open to receiving it and embracing it and adopting it. Yeah, I think that happened to pretty much almost everyone, right? I, I maybe I started in a different way. I think we we suddenly had to do grocery shopping uh, digitally, right? So everything became digital from day to night. We could yeah. not get out. In, 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 it's also, I know it's not the same for every country, but uh, in many places, in many regions, we couldn't just not get out of the house uh, to do pretty much anything. Uh, so doing digital, solving issues day to day, thanks digitally, becoming a reality for most of the people. And then when I transfer and I bring that back to the company, so it was, it changed the conversations of many parts of the organization, to be honest. Uh, areas that were a little bit more distant from the digital transformation that we were already talking about since 2018, suddenly were more empathetic to understand why we had to change some of the more traditional way of doing things like, for example, the budgeting process, right? And then also uh, how agility way of working could help us to really unlock value in some things and then start doing some things waterfall and start using more agile. So we, we had a lot of that, but I think the, the pandemic at the end of the day brought a reality to everyone and made us live a life very different than what we were living before. So before we had option, right? We, we had the option to go online or to do things physically. Now, then suddenly that there was no option anymore. Everything had to go through. And the services, the digital services in general from 
from uh, consumers uh, uh, services to even product companies that would sell, sell things, even banking industry had improved a lot since the pandemic, during the pandemic, right? You can totally see, and I can really relate to the, the main amount of features that are coming out and the ways of doing things differently, not to mention Google, of course, uh, that are, it's so much e easier now to use the same tools that we were using since the beginning. The whole AI behind the tools are, are getting better and better and better and making a better job and making our lives easier. So it is, it is yeah, more than talking about one on another, part of the organization. I think in general, it is just um, the reality changes. And then suddenly digital is at the core of the, of the organization. I think almost uh, probably of, the, of every organization in the planet. Uh, for sure in Latin, uh, we, if before we had to struggle and we were still a little bit like a supporting area from some of the parts of the interacts in the organization, we are no longer. Yeah. We are really now at the center and we can really influence and we can really be part of the decision process and we can be there since day one. Let me actually do a follow-on question for you on that one, because I think you and I talked about this about two, three months ago when we first met and you, you share with me that uh, even your relationship with the business has changed a little bit, where before you were sort of IT, sort of over there, where now you're partnering closer to a business. Share a little bit about that. How does that, like your relationship and how business sees IT working together, how has that relationship improved? Yes, so it's before, and I when I say before, I could even start from maybe 20, 30 years ago when the <laughs> IT business, right, started. I think in the beginning of the, back then, the, the IT departments were usually outsourced, right? Uh, fully outsourced and then suddenly started coming to inside the companies but then it was the relationship was still pretty much as an order taker somehow mm -hmm. in which the business knows what to do right so they come up with the list of things to do and we had to code it and we had to deliver a date and deliver a, a budget that i need to to make that that dream come true let's say right mm -hmm. so and then suddenly uh, it, it became different but not even before the pandemic i would say so new technologies, a new way of doing things allowed the IT team to challenge the business more and more and more. So we want to do that, but why do we want to do that? What is the problem that we're trying to solve? And this engagement, at least in our case, had started, but it was still, it was progressing, but very slowly. Yeah. When the pandemic came, to be honest, the first thing that the company, one of the first things that we wanted to, needed to decide, it was what to do with our digital agenda. Luckily, we had started in 2019 working in our customer journey digital transformation, the end to end process together with Logan. So, because of that agenda that we had there already, we said, let's accelerate. So, then suddenly, this was the only transformational initiative in the company. Right. Not like the real one. So, then suddenly, we were really at the middle of everything and we had to accelerate. So, we had to prioritize and then we had to decide what was more important. And there was something that was totally led by IT, uh, and, uh, and, and, we, and, and, and we then had to engage with the business. It was a little bit a change of balance. Now, of course, we are already totally integrated again, and we are already back to, come, going back to normal, but it was very interesting to see. Another thing that it was also made a lot of difference was the fact that we, we had a lot of our solutions still on-premises, and we knew that uh, with the new reality, we could not scale much from there. So one of the decisions that we took as well was, was to really uh, accelerate the agenda to go to the, to, to move everything to, uh, to our Google platform, uh, Google Cloud platform, right? So, and, uh, and that was, so this really changes the balance, those, those, those new needs, changes the balance of IT and the relevance of IT inside organizations. So now I, I think that the way that I see is that I am the business, to be honest with you. I mean, I'm the business as right. much as the business is the business. Yeah. So it is no longer the, that, that engagement really changed. In, uh, and I think now we, we decide on things together and we are there since the beginning. And of course, there are some parts of the organization internally that goes better. The others are still growing. Sure. But it is, it is, there is no way back. Yeah. yeah, let's hope so. I think that's uh, always the thing, right? You, you just don't want to go backwards. Hopefully we can go take what we have and actually move forward. So I think that's a, it's a, it's a good story because I think uh, a lot of our customers, I think, uh, always wanted to partner with business, but I think the pandemic has created that, that the, you have to partner. You, you don't have a choice to do it. Yeah. Uh, so Fernando, for you, let me ask you a couple of questions. I'll take the question that I'm supposed to ask you, but I'm going to break it down to two. 
So are there any examples of how your customers, um, or if you can share sort of uh, your customers embracing digital transformation, similar to like LATAM Airlines, what are those customers? Like, what are they embracing? How are they doing it? But the second question I also want to do is, have you changed some of your offerings of what the customers used to ask to uh, for you to do maybe before the pandemic to what you're doing now? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the, the we, we have many, many cases of transformation, for instance, uh, well, you know, the, the LATAM Airlines case is one of our flagship uh, cases, you know, like, like Juliana mentioned, you know, this transformational program uh, started in 2019. So the pandemic uh, for the case of Lacha Marlin was, was nothing more of a confirmation that the digital strategy was moving in the right direction and an acceleration of that strategy. Uh, we've, you know, we've uh, been working with, uh, with Small Direct Club in the US, for instance, uh, for a couple of years now, one of the fastest growing companies in the in the US, particularly in the healthcare space, in the dentist space, they are transforming the way, you know, uh, people can access to uh, to dental health. And, you know, we've been working for them, uh, for them for the last couple of years together, in, also in this massive uh, digital program to, you know, transform the customer journey to improve the, the way uh, customers could have access to to their products, not only through the physical stores, but all, also through the digital experience or a combination of, of both. I think, you know, if anything, uh, this pandemic um, created a huge acceleration for companies who didn't have a mature digital strategy in place to the point where they started to bite more than they can they, they could chew, right? And, um, and then again, it became uh, more about uh, not just the technology solutions and the digital products that they wanted to deliver, but it became uh, a, a big problem uh, around what are the right mechanics and what are, are the right processes that organizations need to implement in order to leverage that that uh, you know uh, those new digital products and those new resources and that transformation. Um, you know this this pandemic, I think. Uh, finally, turn every organization uh, into a into a tech company, pretty much. Like uh, you know, Tesla, for instance, is a is a technology company who happens to make cars. I, I think Latam Airlines is a huge technology company who happens to fly planes, right? Yeah. And um, and I think if anything, uh, you know, that's the the conceptual transformation that this pandemic has left in the strategy of. Of our clients, right? More than ever, everyone is thinking themselves as a technology company uh, first, um, going after you know the services or the products they they want to offer to their clients. Yeah, and then what? And then from an offerings perspective, when you think about prior to the pandemic, you know what sort of you know like what Globin was known for, right? How has that evolved? Have you evolved your portfolio of the things you're helping your customers? Are your customers asking you for different things now? We, you know, we are. We are constantly evolving our digital services, right? Uh, like we we like to say that we are a company in, in constant beta, right? So we, we we challenge the way we do things, and we we want to expand our uh, services portfolio before our clients, you know, realize that they're gonna need that. And uh, you know, in terms of digital services, it really hasn't changed much because of the pandemic. If you know, if anything, I think that. Uh, some products that we've been like using for ourselves for a while now and externalized to some of our clients related to culture strengthening, related to the usage of data to predict attrition, um, to um, to improve the retention of the uh, of talent mm -hmm. and so on and so forth, uh, became you know a topic top of mind for all of our uh, all of our clients, all of the executives in in our clients. Uh, so I would say that's one, right? How to strengthen culture in this new virtual world, how to connect more and better with uh, with employees. Um, and, and you know, I would say that's the, the, the main one. The second one would be, if anything, like, you know, using our consulting capabilities and experience to help them be, become more digitally efficient, to help them uh, to be able to pivot faster into new business models, new solutions, and ultimately, how to become a more predictable organization in terms of digital delivery. So yeah. th those are the kind of offerings that became more relevant than ever to our clients. 
because you know it's not just about the size of the transformational programs but it's also about the urgency mm -hmm. of getting to market quickly and the urgency of getting to the consumer quickly with these solutions we're not talking about three three year programs we're talking about at the very least uh, you know um programs that can be broke broke down in phases so that we can get to the consumer and to the clients very quickly with with impact and that's yeah. what the discussion have been about yeah no it's great and i think one of the things that like we see with our own customers google and even when i talk to some of my peers and other technology companies is sometimes we overuse the term digital transformation and what we find is that not every, it, it means different things to different customers different industries and I even go as far as to say that sometimes it's even different by region, that every region around the world is either more mature, less mature, whether it's emerging markets or you're talking about the United States or Latin America or or, or, or India or Asia. Uh, it's very different. And so making sure that we validate and our customers need to validate themselves, like, what, what does this mean? Like, when you say digital transformation, like, explain that to me, like, what does it mean to you? Because it means uh, different things. And so we try to avoid um going back to the word empathy we try to actually listen and understand and i think that's been a very uh a great dialogue and conversation that we had we had that conversation with juliana when we were talking about digital transformation like what does that mean to her what does that mean to her business how does she define success is what's become uh was a really really good conversation that we hope we can continue going forward so i'll have one more question i know that we have a few questions from our audience so i want to make sure that we get to them so we'll do one last question and then i'll try to see if we can take some of the questions from the audience so when you think about you know a year from now you know we are you know 20 end of 2022 getting into 2023 what does customer experience look like for you and julian i'll start with you what is your customers your passengers and and you know obviously you even have your own customers that are your internal like your pilots and folks you know at the airport things like that so what does customer experience look like for you a year from now and fernando i'll ask you the same thing after that so great it's a it's a great question with too many possibilities of to of answers to give yeah? but i would say that uh let me start by uh, saying that, that for to me the only relevant kpi that matters is to improve the customer experience everything else will come after that so i believe i strongly believe that if we make our car customers uh, enjoying the experience of flying with us in the, since the moment that they start engaging and searching for a flight until after they get where they want to get, the likelihood that he comes back, right, and that he recommends us, it's higher. So that is, for me, to me, let's say the number one thing. And, and now the way that we are working on, on, on the digital transformation, it is really to, to prove a co-creation mindset in which we, we experiment, really, we put some experiments in place, to really test how what is the reaction what is the response does it really work uh, and then we we take it from there and before usually we had a lot of um, people internally in the organization that believed we were the experts of knowing what the customer wanted and we defined an agenda and then developed and we implemented and then afterwards not usually the results was not really what we expected Things are changing so fast. I think that is no longer the way. We have to listen to the customers. We have to try and, th and things before we really uh, invest too much time and, and takes too long into uh, the wrong direction. And I think so. I, I think it's a lot about that, to be honest with you, at the end of the day. So understand that the customers, at least the way that I do, and then I talk a lot about that with my team, I think that making sure that you understand what is the problem that you're trying to solve here. So if you want to do something, let's understand that first. And another thing that for me is very important, it is that we have the ambition to become 100% uh, automated, as you say, and, and, and Fernanda and Global can really use it to that ambition. But we, and, and that is not an easy one, right? Because it, it doesn't go from putting technology. It's, it's really about rethinking the business at the end of the day. Yeah. So we, I have policies today that I cannot automate. Yeah. So if I don't change those policies, I will still need to force the customer to go through channels, physical channels, or phone, phone um, or, or interact through, through the phone, uh, because I'm not, I cannot really make it, he solve the issues from his pocket, from his cell phone. Yeah. So it, it is really about uh, giving the ambition high, I would say, and uh, that we want to make sure that we, we develop the best as we can, 100% automation, 
in, in improve, it's constantly improving the customer experience. That is, this is not a game that has a name, right? So it's, it's never going to end and we're never going to be anywhere. So yeah. setting goals and setting visions, it's, it's very hard right now. So yeah. I think it's a continuous process that we have to keep working. Yeah, I always tell people that customer experience is a journey, not a destination. So, mm -hmm. Fernando, how about you? So, you know, I think um, one of the uh, lessons that this pandemic left us with is that we we learned again how to value our time, right? Uh, we, 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 we value our time more than ever, and we learned to use our time in different ways because we, we were forced to stay at home and we, we you know, we spend more time with our families. We spend more time with doing, you know, different things uh, other than working and doing whatever we need to do every day, right? So the the value of time, I think it's uh, it's something that it's top of mind uh, when you want to design, a, you know, a, a frictionless customer experience, right? And so, you know, anything that that reduces wait times, anything that reduces friction, right? When you need to uh, uh, you know, to place an order or you need to book a plane ticket or get on a plane or, you know, do whatever, I think it's going to be a key metric to, to success uh, moving forward more than ever. Um, I think that, you know, uh, technologies that have been there for many years, like uh, conversational interfaces, for instance, I think they're going to they're gonna evolve even more and they're going to become more handy uh, in as a key part of the of the customer experience to do to basically basically any transaction they 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 need to do so uh you know anything related to to minimize that friction and use technology to uh, again to uh make our clients you know spend less time doing the things that they need to do i think it's going to be key for success for every organization moving forward great all right so we have five more minutes before we do our closing remarks and so there's a few questions so we're going to do a rapid fire on some of these questions so if you can take one quick minute and be able to help answer the question. So I'll start with you, uh, Fernando, since you're on the screen, on my screen first. So I'll remind, how do you prevent your team from burning out, right? It's been difficult the last 18 months. And even though we're coming out, I think Juliana made the, made the comment about this hybrid workforce where some are gonna work from home, some are gonna come in the office. How do you prevent people from burning out and adapting sort of to this new normal? So, uh, you know, over the last year and a half, we've launched uh, a variety of uh, different programs aim not only for our global quality of life, but also for their families. Like we've uh, we've taught their, their their kids to play the guitar. We've uh, you know we've given away uh, you know uh, memberships for these applications that you know allow you to to meditate or allow you to to relax while you're at, uh, at work. Uh, we've launched a new you know set of benefits that our Glovers could enjoy from from their homes, many different things. We've pushed like, uh, you know, reduced uh, uh, working working days during the summer, many different things. Uh, that, and, and we learned a lot as we, as we experimented. Um, but, and th all of those things are here to stay now, right? Yeah. All those benefits are here to stay. So, uh, you know, a lot of focus on the experience of the employees and the experience of their families who were closer to employees more than ever, I think uh, needs to be key in order to avoid that burnout. Great, thank you. How about you, Juliana? Uh, let me think on what can I add to what Fernando said, right? So maybe I, I will bring one thing. Uh, I believe that we became more productive and uh, we don't waste the hours that you used to wait in the traffic to get to the office. In many cases, we could not go to the gym anymore, right? And do this type of thing. Kids were home, so we didn't have to take them, drive them and pick them up from school. I think we got used, we might have gotten used to the to working and be more productive. But that is also something that may seem really positive in one at first, but it's also something that needs to be managed alongside with everything that Fernand said about the people in their life and their families. Uh, so is the productivity. So is it sustainable, the amount of things that the teams are doing? Is it going to be different when you go back to the office? So I, I think it's also important to pay attention. That can be very different from depending on the type of work that you have and the company and the challenge and the objectives. But me being the leader of digital for, for, the, for the airline, for, for, for Latin, 
uh, I can tell my teams are doing much more individually than they used to do before. And, uh, and, um, and that I'm not sure if that's sustainable. I'm not sure if we can keep that, that pressure on them so high. Yeah. Uh, and another final thing that I would say is that holidays. And it's very hard. I'm having trouble convincing my team to go on holidays, right? Because we cannot travel much yet. We still have to be here. But I would think I, I, I have been encouraging them to do it. And I think it's important that you pay attention to that. Even if you don't go somewhere and everybody wants to take a vacation sometimes to go somewhere, it's very important to stop, right? Take a break, disconnect, and, uh, and, uh, and try different things, maybe, if the pandemic already allows. Uh, I would say I would add those two things up. Yeah, yeah. I think for me, I'll I'll, I'll share a little about our, our my team is. So, you know, one of the things that the pandemic did is that suddenly um, there wasn't a personal and a business time. You rolled out of bed into the office, and you rolled out of the office back into dinner and go to bed. So there was always that, and and that actually went beyond Monday through Friday. It became the Saturday and the Sunday, something like a seven days a week kind of format. And so we did implement the concept of like that they will not be getting any emails or anything from me over the weekend. Right, and so one of one of the features of some of our technology and our tools out there that you can say, hey, you can schedule emails to go out Monday morning, rather than getting them on Saturday afternoon or a Sunday morning or Sunday evening. Um, and as a leaders, we kind of have to model the behavior because if you can say it, but if you don't do it, your team is going to feel pressure of doing it, and that created it was creating stress that I wasn't realizing it, and so we stopped that. So that was one uh, lesson learned that we've implemented, and then we're going to continue to go forward that. Unless it's an emergency, right? Unless it's something where we have customers like you that are maybe uh, on on fire and they need our attention, obviously we'll jump in. But typically, we anything can wait until Monday morning. So that's one thing that we've done to kind of reduce some of the burnout. So there's a, a few questions left before and to go to our closing remarks. And so this is an interesting question. So I'll start with you, Juliana. Question number one: How do you foresee the metaverse impacting and changing the way we work and travel? What do you think would be hard for people to accept the change from a physical experience to a full digital experience? I'm very positive about it, to be honest with you. I think I think that people and customers are more ready than we believe. Uh, I, we can see already, for example, in the airline industry, realities as biometrics working well. There is a lot of potential when you think of metaverse, for example, for the, the use of the time that we have and a better use of the time that we have inside the plant. Uh, so I, I think that is, there are many things. The future is beautiful, it's bright, and has so many opportunities with the new technologies. Uh, we will have to see how to use that, how to get there, right? So that's why I was mentioning before, at least in our case, going to cloud was so important as well, because in order to scale and to use those technologies, we need to make sure that the infrastructure is going to be there. We cannot change everything at once. We cannot rewrite every code, every code that we have in a company at once. So we have to make sure that what we have in there is in good condition to be explored more in the, in the, in the higher part of the architecture, right? When you, think, uh, 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 when you think about an ecosystem, so and we can use this type of technology. And I think the, the customers are going to be ready, to be honest with you, I think they especially the travel industry are gonna we are gonna be able to use a lot of that in the near time in, in for many reasons and I think it's a technology one but it's also it's a better use of time it's more productivity and it's more productive for the people that work in a town and for sure it's more productive for the customer that is flying uh, but also eventually it's more fun right it's it's a it's 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 a gives a lot more pleasure to to do and we have a lot of pleasure in, in talking about those things and imagining a future with so many possibilities. Yeah, no, I love that. I love it. And I think uh, as you and I have talked about reimagining sort of that experience of your passengers from even the moment that they book a flight till they actually leave the plane, right? That entire, uh, it's going to be a beautiful way to actually redesign what that is going to look like. Yeah, and so for now, we, we still have to go to the flights to get somewhere. We think we <laughs> cannot do that for us as well as yet, but yeah. maybe eventually one day, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Well, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe, maybe not in our lifetime, but yes, someday maybe. So, Fernando, for you, you know, as you see some of your customers sort of embracing digital transformation, this question came up around, you know, what, are, what, are, how do you overcome the challenges of both the technology adoption, but also the skills required to support digital transformation? So, how are you helping your customers? Because you don't want them to be only dependent on you. Right, but how do you actually enable our customers so they can empower them, so they can actually embrace technology and they can actually take it forward? So, you know, um, 
over the last few months, actually the last last year, we've been working on on a new set of frameworks uh, that we call Digital Edge, and those frameworks are are meant to uh, basically help our clients uh, measure their uh, delivery capabilities in a standardized way, and uh, ultimately, you know, helping them to become a more predictable delivery organization. Uh, measuring uh, things like uh, processes, culture, continuous delivery, uh, and many others, we, we've been able to come up with a framework that compares different companies in different levels of maturity around these dimensions, and ultimately come up with a set of actionable items towards becoming more powerful uh, delivery, digital delivery organization, right? So uh, our focus has been uh, put on that lately because that's what our clients have been asking from us um not because it's about the discussion whether you know i could like use a partner for a certain project or not but but rather how can i really transform my, my organization from a delivery perspective from a delivery capabilities perspective so you know um everything related to how we transform their processes how we help them shape their culture in different way or strengthen the the culture of our our companies, how we help them become more product centric, more agile, how we help them pivot faster towards different products or different services. That's the way we found to, uh, you know, to help our clients, uh, you know, be able to become a more digital organization. And, uh, and you know, we only launched it, launched it a few months ago and it's been tremendously uh, successful and we call it uh, Digital Edge. That, that has been our contribution, just a bomb up, uh, above and beyond our suite of uh, delivery uh, of digital services. Great. So now I'm going to ask both of you a personal question. This was not in the script. This you're, You don't even know the question I'm going to ask you, so you're going to have to think on your feet. So we'll start with you, Fernando. So in the pandemic, I'm sure you watched shows on any virtual work, uh, a streaming service out there. What is your recommendation for the audience of your favorite Netflix, Disney Plus, HBO Max, whatever the streaming service you belong to that you recommend that you want your audience to watch? Well, I would recommend everyone to watch Succession. <laughs> I think it's one of the most amazing uh, TV shows I've seen in my life. You know, the, the way it deals with, uh, you know, with the with family issues, the way it deals with corporate issues, uh, uh, and and the way like everything you know plays together, and how 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 quick things uh, things move, and uh, I think it's it's I, I found it fascinating, so I I recommend it to everyone. Succession, yes. All right, so Succession is on HBO Max. I also have watched it. It's a show that makes me very uncomfortable sometimes because of the family dynamics of the hate and love relationship, where you want them to be successful, but you also cannot believe that there's that kind of relationship between <laughs> parents and children but yeah it's a great show great great uh, great choice juliana your choice okay so let me bring two if i can so the first one i think that i was really that i really enjoyed watching was ted lasso <laughs> on, on apple tv i think he's an amazing leader and it's so <laughs> So unorthodox, right? In so many things, and uh, and then you can see the power of leadership. That sometimes you don't even know the concept, and uh, and just by uh, empowering people and, and uh, making them believe that they can do better, they can be better. You get the results that are were not uh, you thought were not possible before. And there's another one that is more controversial that I am also uh, I really enjoyed watching. Well, it's it's the, the morning show. Mm. But, it's more it's, it's a little bit tougher but it's a topic that we we know that we sometimes we talk about it and then some companies and cultures and environments we may talk about more or less about uh, this the type of topic that they are covered there right so uh, the sexual harassment at the end of the day and it's, uh, it's so powerful it's really it's really powerful i i every time that i watch an episode I, i'm really impacted I, it's really it's a really great actor, uh, actor, actresses, and actors there, yeah. and it's amazing. Just I just enjoy it very much. Great, thank you. I've seen. Um, I have not seen. Uh, I've seen Ted Lasso, but I'm not seen uh, the morning show. But I will have to write it down. Uh, for me, my recommendation is Ozark. Mm. Oh yes, 
So whoever hasn't watched it, that's another one that is very un makes you very uncomfortable, but it's also very entertaining because as soon as the episode is over, you want to get to the next one. So with that, I'm going to have a couple of closing remarks, and then I'll uh, also want, first of all, let me just start saying thank you, Juliana, and thank you, Fernando, for your time. This was hopefully um, eye-opening for the audience, and uh, thank you for being so honest and frank. Uh, I appreciate it. It's been great collaborating with all of you, putting sort of the content for this for this session together, and hopefully uh, it wasn't as scripted as we thought we were going to be. It actually came out very natural, and I appreciate everybody's honesty and transparency around the challenges, but also the opportunities of the future. So thank you for that. And so with that, we're gonna close this thing out, but I wanted just to say, look, I, I, when I think about the big takeaways of what we had in the last 18 months, but as we go forward is that, you know, just have empathy, empathy for your customers, but also empathy for your employees. I think uh, when I tell my team is the only two things I wake up every morning for is my customers and my team, nothing else matters. And I think if you take care of those two audiences, for lack of a better word, then everything sort of solves on its own. And I think take the opportunity that technology will disrupt. Technology will also take you to sort of the new horizons. And I think whether it's with Google or with any other technology company out there, I think it's um, you have an opportunity to truly um, reimagine what your customer's experience can be. And uh, hopefully you're enjoying the session. And uh, thank you to High Tech for allowing us to share with all of you some of our thoughts. So thank you, Juliana. Thank you, Fernando. Thank you, Carlos. Mm -hmm. Pleasure. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.